G'day everyone. In this video what we're going to create is a graphic of some coloured paper by um, using some layer styles and um, using the filter gallery as well. So um, let's get into it. First of all, um, to create our new document, I might just start, let's just go to video film and let's just go 1920 by 1080 pixels here, the high definition TV one. We're not going to make this for film or anything, but we'll just use that preset. Um, okay, so the first thing we want to do is get the rectangle tool. If you can't see it, click and hold and it would be hidden behind those other two uh, shapes. Click and drag a rectangle out. Um, and that will, you can't see it because it's white on white background, but that's what we want. Um, let's delete the background layer, drag that into the bin, okay, because we don't need that. Now, first of all, what we're going to do is um, and we need to go to filter and convert for smart filters. That may just means every filter that we apply onto this image is going to be editable instead of kind of embedded into the, into the document. Um, yes, click OK here, and that's what we want. Now, the next thing we're going to do is add a color overlay to it. So in the layer style um, button there, click that and go to color overlay. And what we might do is we might just have a color of like just a gray to begin with, around about there if you select. Um, I think that's what we need to do. Yep. Click OK. All right. So um, there's our basic color of our um, of our coloured paper, uh, which we will be able to change later on. Um, okay, so what we need to do is now add the texture of what actually what the paper what paper would actually look like in real life if you looked at it. So, as to do that, we're going to apply a few filters. So, up in filter, make sure you select filter gallery. Don't select the first one. Select the second one. Okay. Um, and the first one we're going to apply is um, if you open the texture folder and if you go to texturize, mine's already going to default and apply these settings to me for us. Um, so choose texturize um, in texture, change yours to sandstone if it isn't on it. Um, scaling, you can drop scaling down to 50%. And relief, mine set at about three, which works pretty well. Light should be set on the top, and you'll notice in the preview that um, your white colour now has some um, bumps on it, has some texture on it. So click OK to set that, and you'll notice down here we've got in our layer we've got our filter gallery, our first filter applied. And I can, you probably can't see it on the screen, but you can use the, the eye to hide, turn that effect on and off, so you can see the change. All right, now the next thing, let's go up to filter again. And again, don't choose the first one, choose the second one. If you choose the first one, it's going to reapply that same filter again, which is not what we want. So go to filter gallery. And the next one that we're going to apply is if we go into the brush strokes um, folder, choose spatter. And let's go over to our settings and give it a spray radius of around about 10 and a smoothness of around about five, okay? And click OK there, and you can see down in our layers, our second filter's been applied. So we're combining the two filters together, and we'll combine a third one to create um, a paper texture for this color, a shape that we created. Um, again, second filter gallery. Now I'm gonna close that folder to tidy it up a bit. Let's go into, oh no, we're gonna stay in brush strokes and we wanna choose sprayed strokes. And um, in sprayed strokes, I find what works for this size document, probably a stroke length of about 16. And you can experiment with these settings to try to get it as, um, you might be able to experiment and get a better looking than what I can get. Um, 18, I oh, probably spray radius of about 18 seems to work. Click OK. Okay, so there you have it. We've created our um, coloured paper texture. Now, the reason why we used um, converted for smart filters is that if we want to change the colour of this paper, we can just go back and into our layers and double click colour overlay and go down here. Um, just by the way, make sure multiply is selected. It should default to it. Um, I should have told you that earlier. Um, so say I want some um, blue paper. All right, there we've got some blue coloured paper that we can work with. All right, so how do we use this? Now, one way you could use it is to cut it up and to make shapes out of it and to use it in another design. So first of all, we want to save 
um, our original Photoshop document and let's just call it colored paper. Uh, I'm just going to put it on my desktop for now to make things quick. All right, so there I've got my original Photoshop document saved, but um, we can now save copies from this as PNGs for use in another document. So let's go to um, export and we'll go do a quick export as a PNG, which is a lossless file format. And let's call this blue paper. Click save and sorry, save. All right. And uh, now say I have a new document that we're working on. Um, I'm just going to use the same preset. Let's create that. And I need some colored paper texture for some reason. So if we go to file and we go to place embedded, let's do that for now. Um, find the blue paper. There we go. And let's place that in there. And there's our blue paper in the new document. Now, um, might, if you wanted to, you could use this to cut shapes out of, um, for, as one example. So you could use this um, rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to hold shift and option to create a perfect circle, make a selection there. Um, and I'm just going to go, let's go to inverse that, select an inverse to reverse the selection. And let's hit delete. And it's going to tell us it's not deletable because it's a smart object. So we need to rasterize the layer and turn it into pixels. So if you right click the layer, Go to rasterize layer, and now you'll be able to press delete on the keyboard and hold command and press D to deselect, get the move tool. And now you've got this um, colored papered uh, texture in a design. Um, to make it a little bit nicer, you could um, add a little drop shadow to it so it stands away, up, stands, um, away from the background a little bit more. Uh, I'm just going to use little ones, just a bit bigger than I'll, so that you can see. And so there we have it. Now you could even add some text on top of there. You could call it circle. All right, it's a bit big. It's not fitting entirely on top. I'll just quit do a quick free transform. There we go. Um, we could also, um, I've got that drop shadow on there. We could also add the drop shadow to the text as well. Now here's a good little trick. If I wanna copy the drop shadow from here onto this onto the text I can right click this layer and we can go to copy layer style so that will copy the settings of the drop shadow click on your top the layer you want to apply it um, to which is the text layer and down the bottom here you can paste the layer style and you can see that it's popped the drop shadow on here with the same settings as that one so it looks like it's standing away from the background a bit more now if you zoom in closely you can see um, the paper, blue paper texture um, so yeah, you can use that as, you can go back to your original document, if you want a different coloured piece of paper, you could change the colour, export it as a PNG like, um, like we just did, and then you can bring it into other Photoshop designs, you could bring it into, I don't know, you get creative with it, video editing projects, animations, whatever, okay, you've got coloured paper there. Okay, thank you.